<laughs> We're about two, three minutes late, but I was having this greet, everybody. Well, I wore green and so did uh, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, really? Well, good for <laughs> you. See. I won't get to paint you, though. Uh. <laughs> Romans chapter 12. Where's that old that man of yours? Oh, okay. He'll be here in a minute, huh? I call him. <laughs> Going to start at verse fourteen, whether we're supposed to or not. <laughs> Lee had to do it. Yes, Romans 12. Well, we left off at verse 12 last time. All right, let's start at verse 12. No, we, that's where we ended. You finished it? Yeah, okay. 13 where we started. 13. That's, uh, let's have a word of prayer first. Um, I need a bulletin to <laughs> keep my mind. Yeah. Um, Green one or the orange? Yeah, just so I can see the sick right quick. Have my... John Nelson is home doing better. In fact, Donya said he's doing fantastic. So that's great to hear. Lonnie Stevens continues to be at rehab at uh, Woodland's place. Carl Kent is home and his back surgery was. Uh, a great success. Uh, he is now enjoying the pain from the incisions. And uh, he had a little bit more exten extensive surgery than he thought. They had to open up the back to put in a steel rod. Can you imagine that? Uh, Glenda Robinson is home. She is on a heavy medication to help her get some rest. Uh, She's been through an emotional roller coaster. Uh, so let's keep Glenda in our prayers. Uh, how's Matt Fink still improving? Let's make him out of ice cream here. He is improving. Yeah. That, that's great. I could have asked Elaine the same thing, but uh, certainly glad about that. Vicki Kites is here. Anything new? No. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Ashlyn, did you, did you get that job? God, congratulations. All right. Anybody else we need to pray for? Yes. <laughs> Sean is hurting from a fall. Yeah, she broke her nose and she's black and blue and I'm like, ooh. I mean, it, it looks like someone beat her on her face. And there's nobody to beat her. Yeah, she, Son didn't do that on Mother's Day, did you? <laughs> Not this time. She said that she fell right on her face. Oh, that's terrible. So Sean Phillips. Anybody else? Okay, let's go to our Heavenly Father. Our God and Father, we're thankful for this moment. That we can come together around your word. To be enlightened, to be encouraged, to be strengthened, and even to be challenged. That we might always seeking your approval and pleasure. Father, also to be united in our praise to you. May we never forget to be thankful. Being thankful can overcome discouragement, heartache, and loneliness. Father, we pray for all these that are among us that we're concerned about. Even Sean Phillips, uh, Devin's mother, she fell. And 
bummed herself up. We pray that she can recover very soon. Be with all those that have been having difficulty in the hospital or surgery. For John Nelson, Ronnie Stevens, Carl Kent, Glenda Robinson. Father, we rejoice that Matt Fink is out of ICU. That means he's improving. And we pray that all his faculties will return and that he can be up and doing things with and for his family. <coughs> Father, we continue our prayers for Vicki Kites and all that she's going through. We're thankful for her spirit, her up and cheerful way. Father, we pray for Jeremy Sweet as he's on a waiting list to have a transplant of both of his lungs. We pray that he has the strength <clears throat> to continue until that happens. Father, we're thankful for his attitude, his faith. Bless him and Robin. Father, we for pray for world peace for Ukraine and Russia, that that war would end. The difficulties in Congo, Father, as the gospel is being preached there, we have hope that great changes will take place, as we've seen already, things improving. Be with those men from Uganda as they travel to preach the gospel. Keep them safe. And Father, we're thankful for your word that will land on honest hearts that they will respond and change their life from worldliness to godliness go with us through our study father in jesus name amen amen <clears throat> distributing to the necessity of the saints you go to acts chapter 2 and it says they had all things common well we all have needs we all have struggles we all need food, raiment, shelter. What does God say that he's going to give us when we seek him first? All these necessities. Does that mean luxuries? Well, that might even be luxuries in regard to some people that have nothing and really have no promise of change because there's no jobs. We need to be thankful for what we have. But here it says, Paul later says, work in such a way that you may give to someone else. We're rich, aren't we? How many people is going to go out to eat today? <laughs> Not as many as I thought. <laughs> I know you're afraid of those long lines at the cafeteria or the restaurant with, with all the others taking their mothers out. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, some, you didn't know where to go because you knew it would be busy. Crazy. I just hope Cotton Patch puts on some new servers. <laughs> uh, but we can afford when we want to uh, go out. Even if we don't, we've got plenty at home. Yeah. You, you went to the grocery store, and what used to fill up three baskets <laughs> fills up one. But we still, well, we have to gripe about. If it didn't have income, if it didn't have money to buy, you know, we struggle. I know all of us do. But because we're blessed, we're able to bless somebody else. So this distribution, I have, and even though it might be little, I can help someone else. If anything, I can help them improve, challenge them. You know, a lot of times people don't have because they are not disciplined in their, their habits to, to save, uh, to be frugal, you know. Uh, how much money do we waste? I, I can think of things I bought, and now that I'm moving them there to the next house, I thought, why in the world did I need that? I haven't used it. So, you know, but 
here in the first century, uh, as the church is beginning, there's all kinds of people. Uh, these Gentiles don't have the same frame of mind as, as Jewish Christians. You think of a Jew, what do you think of? Someone disciplined, someone who knows how to make a profit, someone who uh, survives. Uh, I'm not so sure Gentiles have some of these things. Why else would Paul and, excuse me, the apostles at uh, Jerusalem write a letter to those Gentile, uh, Gentiles who are being converted? You know, stay away from these things and be careful about this. Four or five items there is helping the Gentile mind as he became a Christian to, to put aside these things that the Jews for, for the longest time haven't had a, diff, had, had a difficult time with. Now, some will say distributing to the necessity of saints means we don't help anybody else. Galatians says, do good unto all men, especially in the household of faith. Can't we help anybody and everybody? It's our obligation. Well, uh, is it a personal obligation to help them, or can uh, the funds given to the Lord out of the treasury, we call it, can that be utilized to feed somebody? Well, some a, some congregations they they say it's a uh, individual basis. Don't take the money of God and help the afflicted. I personally think if it's if it's money that we've given in goodwill to the to the body of Christ, there is a ministration to help. The less fortunate, whether they're Christian or a, a non-Christian. I personally don't believe that God will hold it against us if we do it uh, in a congregation, you know. Uh, but we also have, I think, a personal responsibility in some cases. James, I appreciate that. To, to help. Yeah. Will God hold us accountable if we hold everything in and not help somebody? And I know we all have this concern about, well, should we help somebody that doesn't deserve it? Because they're addicted and waste their money on vices. And that's a hard one. I had two men come at Pottsboro and wanting gasoline. They were <laughs> stranded. And, and I don't know where they were going because you, you got to want to go to Pottsboro. It's not on the way to any place except yeah. to the lake. But the first thing I smelled on them was smoke. And I, I was just honest with them. You have money to buy cigarettes? At, at that time, gasoline prices were down. They could have bought two gallons of gas if they hadn't bought those cigarettes. And I, I just asked them, is it fair for me to provide you gasoline when you not being accountable. Everybody has to do their <laughs> own thing or, or live up to the best of your ability. Given the hospitality. Okay. When's the last time you had somebody in your home? Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday. When's the last time you had somebody on your front porch? I don't have a front porch. You know, yet years ago, neighborhoods had all had porches, and they'd walk and and see somebody, and they'd wave, and they'd go to their porch, and they'd talk and visit, and maybe share black eyed peas or uh, zucchini because zucchini was going out their ear. You know, here, take some of my zucchini. You know, today, are we hospitable? Open. Well, what's the first thing we say? Get off my porch. <laughs> well, well, I hope not. Um, 
Do we know our neighbors? Another thought was going to come to me was, uh, oh, I don't want anybody over because they'll see my dirty house. <laughs> I've, I've told somebody that I'm coming to visit you. Uh, call before you come. <laughs> Let me get everything in place. Let me have, uh, the, what's the genie over the, the, uh, Cleaning, you know, the, the cleaning with uh, soap that you can buy. Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean, thank you. Yeah, let me put Mr. Clean to work. And, and when I get the house all spick and span, then you can come over. Well, you know, I don't, when I come, I don't wear white gloves and put my hand on your uh, mantelpiece. I don't check for dust. In fact, I don't look at anything except you. You're the important person. You're the one I want to get to know. You're the one I want to challenge. Now, if I come with a ball bat, <laughs> you better say, uh, let's rethink that. Now, I'm not going to come with a ball bat to, to change your way. That, that won't get anything done, will it? Except maybe get me arrested. <laughs> maybe you just want to play some baseball. Yeah, let's go outside and play some baseball. Do more things together. But when Paul says here, give yourselves be hospitable, there's a reason. Christianity is not uh, a lone lifestyle. When COVID hit, I understand the lockdown. I understand there it, it was so scary because thousands of people were dying. When it first hit, I remember New York and New Jersey, and they were having 700-something deaths there in some of those places. No wonder we didn't want to get out. We were trying to stay alive. But there is a leftover uh, coincidence there are Christians who have yet to go into the doors of a, a church building they've got used to that online worship tuning in to someone's live stream worship what's singing all about we're singing one to another, teaching one another, encouraging one another. Are you getting that when you're all alone in your home? I, I believe that's what Paul is aiming at. I'm glad. I don't know of anybody that's staying home now here at Central because of uh, afraid of getting COVID or stayed in that habit of staying home. But other places, I, I've heard some bigger congregations say, They've not returned to normal yet. Next verse, unless there's any question or comment. And we've spent 10 minutes on one verse. <laughs> Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. <clears throat> Don't we like to tell the world if somebody mistreats us? They were rude to us. They were unkind. They looked at us with cross eyes. <laughs> when I was a kid, we, we played, you know, we'd cross our eyes. What did mom always say? Don't do that too much. You'll get stuck like that. <laughs> i get stuck like that. <laughs> I hope nobody's cross-eyed by some predicament. But... Uh, we like to tell people what's happened to us. And when we do that, don't we make the other person look <clears throat> awful? We might hurt somebody's reputation. Now, this persecution here is more severe than just having your feelings hurt. You've been attacked because of your faith. 
I'm going to talk about a man that went to Pakistan in my sermon, not to conform. I personally am afraid to go to Pakistan, Iran, some of those places because of the majority of the religion there. And I know that they hate Christians. I know they don't tolerate Christianity. I don't want to go somewhere where, where I'm just out and out of tag. I, I like my life, and I want to be able to serve other places, you know. But I believe that blessed would be like to be kind and considerate to one another. We used to could talk about things. <clears throat> now you don't have a, a, an opinion. <clears throat> I don't know where it's coming from, but society is told you only think down this line. You don't have freedom of speech like we used to. And you know what we're talking about. But bless them that persecute you. Do, do you think Paul uh, looked up at the Roman jailer and says, bless you for putting me in this dungeon and, and my back is hamburger meat. Thanks for all those uh, whip lashes. Well, didn't he, in essence, do that in a way by praising God and, and prayer? Did it have an effect on that Roman uh, prison guard? When, when the opportunity to, to run and flee, when the doors are open, there they are, still in the prison. It kind of just makes me think, can this be real? If I was in prison and my chains fell off and the doors were open, guess where I'm going? Lickety split. I'm going out that door. Yes. Think about this, Ray. Paul asked God to help him with this, this man. So God set up a, a thing to happen. And he's not setting things up for us to happen so we can save that man who's been persecuting us. So we can go out there. He just got hit by a car. He's just cussed me out. I go and he got hit by a car. I pick him up and, and, and I bring him back to life. Now that, God's not doing that in every, every situation. But the Holy Spirit was in Paul and he set that whole thing up that the Earthquake happened, the, the door opened up, and the guy seen Paul isn't such a bad guy. <coughs> but the world nowadays, they don't see that <coughs> unless there's help from God doing that. And I don't believe God is going to go to each person and change his attitude so you can go talk to him and make him a Christian. Do opportunities come our way? Yes. Yeah, they come your way, but not like Paul's did. That wasn't just an accident. I can say in agreement with you that God in many ways worked upon people's lives in a different way in that first century because the church needed to grow. Christianity needed to grow. Now, it's our duty to just, to just preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And let the chips fall where they may, pretty much. But people will make up their their own mind. Our job is just to sow the seed. Is there more to it? How about nurturing somebody? Mm -hmm. This young man that I'm trying to work with, Miles, <clears throat> he's got dreadlocks. He's, he's different. You, you talk about complete opposites. Here I am, a 69-year-old, trying to influence a 19-year-old, coming from different cultures. <laughs> Just because I was willing to listen a little bit, that boy opened up to me. He said, I've got problems. Before he left, after mowing my grass, we were giving each other a hug. This week, we got together again. 
And you should have seen him smile when he saw me. Someone was paying him attention. Not like some young thug. Outcast. He's worth that time. I'm nurturing him. Am I going to go to him and say, Miles, if you don't become a member of the church of Christ, you're going to hell? I, do, I don't dare do that. There's nothing like wanting to take that. Is it the truth that's important to be members of the Lord's body? The saved are added to the body of Christ. There's one body, one church. That's all true. But you don't just come out and place judgment on somebody. You help them come to terms and come to understanding of that truth. You lead them. You have to be in, build a relationship with somebody first. To... Well, I agree with you, Pete, but I also, opportunities don't come just fall in our lap. Sometimes, yes. We have to be open. And be ready to, to say a good word, do a kind deed, give somebody a smile, and they'll respond to that kind of love. If I didn't believe that, I would stop right now, go out that door, and never come back. Okay. <laughs> Why would I stand up there and preach if I didn't believe that? Because you're passionate about it. We yeah. got to. Be lights of the world. <laughs> now, how's the Holy Spirit going to work? How's God going to work in the world? Not like he used to. He doesn't send angels. Uh, we have the word. We study it. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15. And we're motivated by that love and that 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 why do you think it's challenge? That, what? Why do you think it's that way now? Why is it so different? Why is it different? Because God's working in the world didn't end, but the avenue is different because we have the written word that's complete. Before, they, they didn't have a Bible to just go to and study and read for themselves. And the miracles were done to prove what they were preaching was truth. And, and Paul and Silas, they were human beings. Paul was inspired, though. He was, he had this Holy Spirit. Does that mean he was perfect? No. Nobody. Nobody's perfect. Let's go to uh, First had, Peter four he, nine. He had several situations like that where he was able to preach the gospel to people to, because of miracles and things. Yeah. Think about the time where he was on that island and that snake came out and bit him. And then that was a miraculous opportunity to preach the gospel. Too. Well, when he didn't die from poisoning, they this must be a holy man. We better listen to him, or let's give this man a chance. They were ready to hear what he had to say. Miracles were done supernaturally. To show that these men were endowed by a spirit of God. It says there in 1 Peter 4 9, use hospitality one to another without grudging. And every man has received the gift, even so ministry the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. We are by God's grace who we are. Let's extend that grace to others. You're supposed to be hospitable to people. That's right. Think about the... If you're hospital, hospitable to the persecutor... One story we don't talk about a lot, or haven't heard about a lot in a while, is the Good Samaritan. Who passed by that man who was beaten and left for dead in the gutter? The priest, the road. priest and a leader. Two religious people. And here's a Samaritan, an outcast, ridiculed because of his where he comes from. 
a, a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. Why were the Jews so critical about the Samaritan? Because they failed to keep themselves separate from Gentile people. <clears throat> and for the longest, the very beginning, don't intermingle, don't marry, don't associate, don't go into business with, have nothing to do with Gentiles. And through the centuries, you know what it became? A hatred of people with souls. Peter had to have a vision in order to go to Cornelius. Things changed. In Matthew 10, there's the limited commission, go to the house of Israel only, two by two. But then we have the great commission, go into all the world. And aren't you glad somebody came to us? Most of us are Gentiles. I don't know anybody that has Jewish heritage here. So let's not call each other dogs. You know, we're all in the same boat. We're Gentile Christians. Go to 1 Corinthians 4, verse 10 through, oh, verse 12, I think. 1 Corinthians 4. Verse 10. Now here's something strange. We are fools for Christ Jesus. Doesn't the Bible say, call no one fool? What, what is Paul saying here? That the world thinks of us as fools. Pardon? That the world thinks of us as fools. They think we're weird. Yeah. So we're fools for Christ's sake. What, what is Paul saying here? Be fools for Christ. I'm lost with him. I'm indebted to him. Everything about him, I'm, I'm for. I'm, I'm the best cheerleader for Christ. Uh, I'll give everything to him. I'll die for him. I'm a fool for Christ. That is my meat, my drink, my clothing, my shelter, my very life, everything. I'm a fool for him. Are we that distinct? I could, I, I could really use this in my sermon today. All right. Verse 9 shows a little more context to that, specifically talking about the apostles and how they become a spectacle to the world. Uh, so that also modifies the word fool as in clown show, as in the jester. They become the laughing stock of the world as far as they... Why? Because they didn't enjoy it. They didn't understand why the Christians were doing. They stay away from drunken parties. They stay away from orgies. They stay away from uh, all kinds of things. They're, they're so different. Uh, they stand out. They're weird. Good good point. Uh, uh, Devin? But ye are wise in Christ. Where does wisdom come from? <laughs> Daniel, good point. Look up wise. What, James? Comes from the word of God, but knowledge of the word of God properly used is what wisdom is. It's practiced knowledge. You you Put to test. You understand this is something to believe, and you say it's worth doing it because you know the outcome. Self control is part of this. When I have discipline, I self control. Guess what? I don't have to face as much problems of life because I chose wrong. We're, be wise in Christ. Oh, look, we are weak. Who are we weak to? 
who considers us weak in the world? But are we weak in, in our own estimation? No. We know who we belong to. And we know if we are his, he'll protect us. The three Hebrew young men that's thrown in the fire, what'd they say? Our God is in control. He'll help us. And even if he doesn't, we're still going to be faithful to him. Oh, that's that's life changing, people. But you are strong, you are honorable, but we are despised. When Jesus went to his hometown, how'd they look at Jesus? Well, you're the carpenter's son. One verse in Matthew it says, A prophet is without honor in his own hometown. Where's your hometown? Someplace different than Denison? Go back there. What kind of life did you lead while there? I wasn't a Christian in Vicksburg most of my time there. I went through high school not being a Christian. And I'm ashamed of things I did. And because of those things, I go back to Vicksburg. What do some of them remember? You scallywag. <laughs> you know, you know. But now they look at my life. I hope they see a difference. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted. That's, that's uh, persecution. And have no certain dwelling place. They're vagabonds. They're, they're sojourners. You know, I've just moved out to a new place. That's my home. I love it. A lot of people don't have a place like that. And we labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we endure. All this is talking about persecution that could come to us because of our faith, our belief, because of being different. Being defamed, we entreat. Someone accuses you of something. What do you say? But I love you. I have good news for you. The teaching of Christ causes me to look at you not with hatred and disgust and anger. I look at you as a person that needs something. And I have the answer for that. Entreat with reason. We can we can talk our ways out, out of trouble, right? Let's let's talk somebody into well I am I mistreating you somehow? Am I against you? The word comes somewhere back in my mind. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Some people think so because that truth is going to say you can't live that way any longer. You can't be worldly. You can't be a thief. You can't be an adulterer. You can't be a drunkard. You can't and, and still be pleasing with God. And, and people take that as you're telling me what I can't do. Isn't that the truth? I write these things not to shame you but as my beloved sons, I admonish you. Well, there's so much right there in verse 14. But bless and curse not. If we resort to cursing or bad-mouthing or despising someone, then that person is a Christian, right? Right. Or it could be a Christian, you know. You, you hope to think that in the church you, you won't be persecuted or uh, 
have had difficulties, confrontations, but <laughs> arguments happen. Have you ever been on social media? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what I see on my social social media sermons, goodwill, how to solve things. Say most of the unfriended little guys. <laughs> Have, that's me. Have I had to unfriend somebody? Yeah. When I've tried to work with them and guide them and all they want to do is and, and they're so obstinate and and I, I just don't have time to waste on someone who won't listen. I can pray for them. What's that phrase that Paul said? Shake the dust off your own feet, off your shoes. Go another direction. Those people in that town wasn't listening to the gospel. He said, I'm, I'm not going to waste my time with these people anymore. I'm going somewhere where it is more fruitful or the opportunity is. Let's start there next time unless somebody has one closing thought. Um, I'll just say all those sermons that you preached going in the last year and this year I've tried I don't know if you know this or not about me or not but I've tried to be here for every single one of you every single week every single day I appreciate that that's good for you keep it up okay, okay. God bless you <laughs>